Hi loves, welcome back to the channel Star by C. Today's tutorial will be on how to recreate this beautiful piece. On the side, I have the inspiration and the other ones are the one I recreated. Do subscribe to the channel, share to friends, don't forget to turn on your notification bell. And thank you so, so much to our returning subscribers. So guys, the first thing I'm going to be marking is the full length of my gown. After folding my fabric into two, I use my largest measurement, which is my hip measurement, alright? Now, the full length I'm working with is 46 inches. And we have the first part, which is the straight gown, and the second part, which is going to have the ruffles at the bottom part, okay? So now, the ruffles is going to be 10 inches, and the main gown is going to be 36 inches. So this is my start line. I'm going ahead to mark it. So this is also going to be serving as my shoulder so at this point now we insert my shoulder measurement so the shoulder i'm working with is eight inches and i'm going to go ahead and mark my eight inches here all right from that point now i'll come down to my bust point which is 10 inches Then 16 inches, my waist measurement here. Then 24 inches for my hip. Alright. Now the next thing I'm going to do now is on my neck shoulder line, I'm going to mark 3 inches for my neck width. Okay. Then from here now, on this shoulder line again, where I where my shoulder measurement stops, I'm going to come down by one inch for my shoulder slope. Now I'm going to connect it to the neck width. Which is this way. Having done this now, from this point, I'm going to come down to my armhole measurement. Alright, so your armhole measurement is going to be your bust measurement divided by six plus one and a half inches okay so mine is seven and a half which is here so this is where my chest line is going to be and i'm going to mark the same shoulder measurements i have here on this line so so this is it here so going ahead to mark it here having done this now i'll divide what i have on this line this armhole line seven and a half by two to get this midpoint. So I have three three quarter. So I'm going to come in by half an inch from that point. I'm trying to create my armhole curve. So from my shoulder slope, I'm going to connect it to this point. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to insert my bust measurements on this chest line. So my bust measurement is eight and a half inches, which is here. Then I'm going to curve this armhole into that line. So this is what I have now. I'm going to go ahead and insert two inches seam allowance. You can decide to work with one and a half or one inch. It's totally fine. Now I'm going to go over to my waist measurement, insert my waist measurement, which is seven plus two inches extra okay the same thing i did here i'm also going to do it on this hip measurement my hip measurement is nine that is when i divide it by four plus two inches seam allowance okay now i'm going to connect the points together so from my chest line i'm going down to the waist measurement then from the waist i'm going down to my hip then from the hip i'm going to go down to the bottom of the gown which i have here this way all right i'm gonna have to fold my fabric into two again this is for my back piece now i'm going to be introducing the first piece i cut out which is my front piece what i have to do is just to place it on top of it arrange it properly and place it on top 
Now, I didn't place it center to center. Reason is the back is going to be having a zip allowance. Okay, so you give about 1.5 to 2 inches allowance for your zip or 1 inch for your zip. So this is mine. The next thing I'm going to do is just to go out and trace this part out. Okay, not so much is happening here. So this is what I have now. This is what it looks is looking like. The next thing we are going to go ahead now to do is to cut out our neck depth. All right. So for the front piece, our neck depth is going to be three inches. So I'm going ahead to mark it, and I'm going to connect it to my neck width. Then for the back piece, our neck depth is going to be two inches. You can decide to work with one and a half inches. So this is what I have, and I'm going to also connect it to my neck width. So I'm going to cut out for my back piece first, together with the front piece. <coughs> then I'm going to cut out for my front piece. Then this is what I have. I will notch where my zip allowance is to stop. So this is what I have. Then I'm going to go ahead and slit my back piece open okay so this is what we have now we're going to go ahead and cut a facing for our neck piece our this is a neck area we're going to cut a facing and all you have to do is just fold a fabric into two this way so i'm going to be starting off with my front piece first then go ahead and place your front piece on top of the folded material okay so this is what i have now and i'm going to go ahead and trace out this neck area first then this part the shoulder line so this is what i have this is what it's looking like then this ending part the base i'm going to go ahead and give it a curve so this is what I have this is what it looks like okay so this is for my front what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and fold it hem the bottom part or you can go ahead and weave it then attach it to our neck piece okay the same thing for my back piece that's what i'm going to also do for my armhole area i'm going to be piping it using my fabric you can go ahead and use a cutting by x for it so this is what i'm going to do i'm cutting my by my piping in a bias form okay so this is what i'm going to use for the piping of my armhole area so for my neck area for this one for instance i'm gonna head to iron it down and this is what i have so the next thing i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be inserting a hemming gun in between this Facing of my this is my face and this is my neck material. I'm going to insert a facing on it and go ahead and give it a good press. Okay, so I to stick together, just like we have for the front. So this is our front piece. This is what it's looking like. Okay, so this is what we have. So when I'm done, I'll go ahead and join the two shoulders together. Guys, the next thing I'm going to do now is to mark my dart. Okay, on my back piece, you can decide to put insert a dart on your front piece. But most times, I don't like having a dart line on my front piece, so that's why I'm not putting a dart on it. So, for my back piece now, from my shoulder line, I'm going to mark one inch below my chest line. So, my chest line is at eight and a half, and one inch below it is nine and a half, which is here. So, from this nine and a half now, I'll get down to 
21 inches that's where my dart is going to stop and the width of my dart is four inches why you have five and a half inches here is because one and a half is for our zip allowance okay and the remaining is for our dart intake that's the width so i'm also going to go ahead and flip it over and mark the same thing on this side okay so this is what my dart intake looks like when i'm done running a stitch on it and this is what i have at the back okay now i'm going to be joining my back shoulder to my front shoulder i'm going to join the two of them together so at this point at the point of making this video i don't have a matching zip so that's why i did not insert my zip okay so i'm going to leave it when i'm done with my dress i'll get a matching color zip to fix my zip all right so i'm going to be joining my two shoulders together the front piece and the back piece go ahead and place it right side to right side stitch on your shoulder line hey guys when i'm done now the next thing i'm going to go ahead is to pipe my armhole area like i said before you can decide to work with a cutting bias all right but i'm using my fabric to pipe my armhole so i'm going to go ahead run a stitch on it first then fold it in and top stitch on it okay so that's what i'm going to do on this material now done piping my armhole this is what it looks like okay so the next thing i went ahead to do was to mark my shape line okay so now i'm going to go ahead and run a stitch on my shape line i'm going to stitch on the left side but for the right side i'm not going to stitch it for now okay because you are going to be having an african print or a crown piece by the side of our crown so i'm not going to touch the side the right side i'm only going to go ahead and shape the left side all right guys the next thing we are going to do now is to shape our dress okay this part of the dress now i'm going to be making a curve note that the side ruffles is going to be at the waist point at the waist area okay the sharp edge is going to be on the waist now from this part now i'm going to go ahead and make a curve into my gown like this towards the center piece of the gown so that's what i'm going ahead to do just trace out a curve so this is what i have now i'm going to measure what i have here around starting from the waistline so from here now i'm going to take my measurements 10 12 14 15 16 so i'm going to take it one half it's one at this point so i have 52 inches that is what i have so i'm going to multiply this 52 inches by three okay but before multiplying it i'm going to be adding extra eight inches to my 52 inches making it 60 inches all right so 60 inches times three that's the length of the fabric i'm going to cut out for my ruffles that is going to be here all right so i've gone ahead to cut it out and this is what i have now i'm going to join it because it's now into pieces i have about three pieces here i'm going to go ahead and join them together the length that's the width is 10 inches i added extra one inch to two inches to it for seam allowance and for folding all right so what i'm going to do now is to join these three pieces i have together then i'm going to hem the bottom part of it so guys the next thing i'm going to do now is to fix this to my dress now i'm going to pick i've already gone ahead to gather it this is my gathers and i have 52 inches plus extra 8 inches okay remember we added 8 inches extra so i also have extra so we have about 60 inches long here all right so now this is what i'm going to go ahead to do I'm going to go so now the next thing i went ahead to do was to place my gather on top of my fabric all right so on this chalk line i'm going to go ahead and pin it down on that chalk line so i'll continue pinning it down
that's what I'm going to go ahead to keep doing. Then I'm going to continue using my sewing machine to run a stitch on it, okay? So from this point now, please, I'm not stitching it with the back for now. I'm only going to go ahead and stitch it here first on only the front. So when I get to this part, I'll keep running it till I get to this back piece, okay? So now I'm done joining my um, gathers to my dress. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close up this area, okay? The side seam. So I'm going to go and close up the side seam. Point now I'm done joining, shaping my dress. So the next thing I'm going to do, remember we have we added extra inches, I think about eight inches to our pleats. Okay, now it's going to come into use. So after shaping your dress, you notice that there is a part that is that has no pleats at the bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the XX you have to complete it here. So I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and run a stitch on it. So when I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and weave my gown, then attach my zip. All right, 